Hello traders, and welcome back to another survival guide. In the trading world, it is very common for traders when beginning their journey or really just continuing along their trading path to stick to time-based charts. They like the concept of their candlesticks being generated after a passage of time, but there are so many other ways that we can gain the information of what's going on in the market. In today's discussion, we're gonna talk about something called tick chart trading. Tick charts are an alternative to the traditional time-based method. At the end of all of this, you'll know exactly what tick charts are and maybe have a better idea if it's worth your time to invest a little bit more research into tick chart trading. Let's get going. Bzzz. In order to discuss tick chart trading, it is crucial that we first discuss what tick charts are and take a look at them. Upon closer inspection here, you'll notice that in the top left corner, it says 1000, and that is going to be our point of reference for what we're looking at. On initial glance, it does look like standard candlesticks, but the measurement of how these candlesticks is being created is what really makes them different. Tick charts represent intraday price action that creates a new bar, aka the candlestick, or you can have it graphed as a line, etc. every time a certain amount of transactions gets executed, and that's what we refer to as the ticks. The trader can specify the number of transactions at which a new bar will be printed. So based on your preferences, you can adjust this up or down, just like we can change our time candlesticks to 5 minutes, 15 minutes, or 4 hours, or 12 hours, doesn't matter. While the number of transactions required to print a new bar is up to you to decide, there are some very common levels that most traders use. These intervals are generally derived from the Fibonacci numbers, including 144, 233, 610, and 1000 is a very popular one as well. But if you find another one that you prefer, you're totally entitled and not wrong for choosing to use it. At the end of the day, whatever is going to make the most sense to you is probably going to be what works best for you. Tick charts help gather information about the ongoing market activity, showing when traders are most active, when the market is sluggish, or even barely moving. Reading a tick chart is similar to how a trader reads other charts. You can still look for things like support, resistance, price breakouts, and the list just goes on and on, including trends, etc. The main difference is that with tick charts, you are looking at transaction level measurements. So for easier comprehension, let's say that we wanted to have a new bar created for every, say, 100 trades for a nice round number. That would be a 100 tick chart. A 100 tick chart can result in very high or very low price action volatility, depending on the market. If the asset is highly liquid, the ticks will be formed very quickly, meaning the price action will be smooth. On the other hand, for less liquid assets, it might take a couple of hours or even days for 100 transactions to actually be executed and for those bars to print. The reason that day traders fancy using tick charts is because they can be adjusted based on the sensitivity and aggressiveness of whatever trading strategy they're trying to use. For example, tick charts can be set to print a bar on a very small number of trades. Instead of waiting for a predetermined amount of time for the bar to print, they can also get themselves into a position in a faster manner if they're doing something like this by bringing their sensitivity down, or on the other side of the spectrum if they don't want things to be too sensitive and they want to see a specific amount of trading data before that bar prints, they can up that number to a much higher number as far as how many ticks it will take in order to print a new bar. It's always a good idea to use backup layers of confirmation or things in conjunction to clarify or read. And a, a powerful combination that traders use with tick charts is the volume histogram. It's a great one to consider if you're really looking for a more overall picture of the market because the tick chart indicates the number of trades, whereas the volume histogram signals the number of contracts. When plotted on a tick chart, the relative size of the volume histogram indicates the average trade size. A large average histogram size signals the potential presence of institutional investors or big traders. On the other hand, if the histogram retains low levels and the trade sizes are also small, this could be a possible indicator of retail trading. Volume indicators as a whole can be very helpful when trading on tick charts since they can help us confirm the levels at which buying or selling is actually taking place. Large positions always will be reflected in larger volume bars, which can confirm the market's next upward or downward move. 
To continue building upon the concept of adding layers of confirmation to the reads that we're getting from our tick charts, here's an example using RSI in conjunction with the volume histogram as well as the tick charts themselves. In this scenario, we're taking a look at the overbought and the oversold levels respectively on this chart. We have a scenario on the left where we have confirmation that things were oversold and we saw a market reversal in conjunction with an increase in trading volume, which led to an upturn in the market. The exact opposite is true where you see this red vertical line where we saw an oversold scenario and we use the RSI to give us confirmation in conjunction with the uptick in volume and we watch the market downturn. There are plenty of reasons why one might prefer trading with tick charts to pretty much anything else. And the first is the noise reduction aspect. The tick chart helps with noise reduction since each bar is created equal and there are no bars with low activity. That way we can prevent ourselves from considering market noise an actual signal and getting involved when we probably shouldn't. Also, if we combine volume with tick charts, we can ensure that all ticks on the chart are equal in size. This means that we will be able to find out when price movements are backed by high volume, indicating the profile of investors that are dominating the market, like those institutional ones that we mentioned. Knowing which trends are backed by the institutional investors and which ones are backed by the retail investors can make or break a trader. And also, we have tick charts can help smooth pre market and after hours trading volume. Usually the activity during these hours is more fragmented, but the tick charts can help us better understand it. Some traders use tick charts to also identify trend exhaustion periods. By giving equal weight to each candle's activity, tick charts can reduce the chance of a false trend continuation bar or candle. And also, the most significant advantage of tick charts in many people's eyes is that they allow us to trade price breakouts on the level of each transactional tick, enabling us to capture even the slightest movements and really move in on the microscopic scale. And for those of you that are aspiring to be day traders, this is a relatively large advantage in most people's eyes. And finally, we can avoid whipsaws during slow and range bound markets. Tick charts can help us avoid those whipsaws that we might expect from other charts. And the reason is that we will only have a tick after a certain amount of trading activity has actually been conducted. If we are to compare tick charts to time charts, the main fundamental difference is going to come down to the fact that tick charts are measuring a specific number of transactions before plotting a new candle, whereas the time charts are measuring a predetermined amount of time. Now, the fundamental flaw that can exist in that world is that a five-minute window, if you're measuring five-minute time charts, during the opening period might be an awful lot more weighted in some ways than a five minute candle that has formed during the lunch hour. Comparing volume charts to tick charts can be a lot more similar than comparing tick charts to time charts and the fact that volume charts are going to take into account the number of contracts traded just like tick charts are taking into account the number of transactions that have occurred. It's just really going to come down which point of, of information is going to best suit you as you're gaining your reads on the market. And once again, it is very common for traders to use both of these in conjunction conjunction with each other, both volume and tick charts at the same time. Brunco charts are not nearly as popular as any of the other options out there, but there are definitely a large group of traders that still like to use Renko charts. These are charts that are going to print a new bar for a predetermined price movement, regardless of whether it's up or down. For example, we can set a Renko chart to create a new bar each time the traded instrument moves 50 points, once again, up or down, and that bar will come. As always, and as with all things, it's going to be up to you to decide how and why to use this information at the end of the day, because it's only gonna be as valuable as it is to you subjectively. So to sum things up, it's going to depend on you as a trader at the end of the day to determine which charts are right for you. Only you will know that because it's going to be based on your personal goals, your personal trading strategy, and 
how efficient you are with gaining the information from the charting style that you're using. The nice thing about tick charts is that they allow us to see things on a much more granular level at times than standard time charts and they're highly customizable. They're a great option and at the very least, now you know about tick charts and you'll have them in the back of your mind if you decide to branch out. Good luck, I'll see you in the next one. Bzzz.